So I've had an issue where I've got loads of these cells which I've took out of faulty Turnigy LiPo batteries and they've been practically useless to me because I haven't been able to solder to the tab, uh, to this tab here, uh, because it's made of aluminium. The positive tabs are aluminium and with normal flux you cannot solder to them at all. So I bought this special flux here and it is very expensive. This is 15 millilitres and it cost 15 pounds. And you've got to use lead free solder with it too. Uh, it doesn't work. They say it's recommended to use lead free. So this is solder that I use. I can't, I can't remember um, exactly what these uh, symbols mean. Uh, I'm sure that one's copper and I think, I think SN is tin. I can't remember what AG is. Yeah, I'm sure it's tin, silver and copper. I'm sure that's what's in it. But first, uh, what, what I've done is I've cleaned the tab thoroughly with a wire brush uh, to make it nice and shiny. And uh, for best results, I probably suggest you, you just clean it immediately before you apply the flux. Now, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to uh, put the normal just normal flux and, and solder on it. So I'm just putting a little bit of this on first. Uh, and then we'll put a bit of lead free solder on there and see if it see if it'll work with this flux. So Yeah, as you can see, it just does not stick at all. So, I'll clean that off. Now I'll apply this flux, and I'll put a link in the description to where you can buy it. Uh, it's so sad that it's that expensive. But, there was a bigger bottle from a different seller. Uh, much bigger, in fact, but uh, all the writing on it was sort of in Korean or Russian or something. Uh, I didn't really have much of a description, so I just bought the stuff out. So I just bought this stuff. And it has a consistency, sort of, has sort of like a gel, oily gel-like consistency. And it has no smell. But when you apply the soldering iron and heat to it, it certainly will have a smell. So keep the fumes away from your eyes. And do not breathe them in. There you go. Now your precaution with soldering batteries, don't keep the heat on it too long. Use a very powerful soldering iron so you can get the heat in and out. Uh, I'll get the heat in very quickly so you don't end up heating up the rest of the cell and damaging it. But as you can see, that's bonded right to that aluminium tab. So I'm going to put a wire on now. So I'm sure that any further soldering you can do, you can just use your normal flux. The aluminium flux is just going to get that initial bond, which you can then solder what you want to. So putting a wire on it just now to see if the bond is actually any good. Now these batteries do absorb heat very fast uh, because it's it's really warm uh, just a few seconds after soldering. As you can see it's really strong, I could dangle the I could dangle the whole cell off it. Uh, that works perfectly. So there's a good way to solder to uh, solder to aluminium tabs on batteries so you're not left with a load of useless cells anymore. Uh, now th these are from an electric bike battery in fact. Uh, which had been damaged inside the casing uh, it suffered pretty horrific damage actually so just here's an example and it's because I never had a sort of a protective wrap around the bottom uh, on one of my other electric bike batteries I sort of had this uh, this material that was surrounding all the cells but uh, this one has went a funny shape and it's got a hole in it uh, so what I'll have to do is strip all these apart 
uh, take out the bad cells and they are spot welded together so I'll have to break those welds uh, and then I'll be left with a load of cells like this which I'll just have to solder up and make into a new battery so that's what motivated me to get this aluminium flux it's a pity about the price 